Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Gospel of Matthew. When Jesus and his disciples had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna, son to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. <clears throat> when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory, and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ.
first reading today is from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. The psalm for today is Psalm 31. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief and my years to sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even among my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant. And in your loving kindness, you saves you. Our New Testament reading this morning is from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him, and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus stood before the governor 
And the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You may say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a simple charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with this innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to him, to, to them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? All of them said, let him be crucified. Then he asked, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole corps cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink, mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's Son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait. Let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. 
After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Today we celebrate Palm Sunday, that day when we remember the time when Jesus entered Jerusalem in triumph, when people laid palms and coats under the donkey upon which he rode in celebration of his being the Messiah. These were people who had been awakened to the truth that Jesus was the Son of God, and they came to worship Him and to be close to Him in thanksgiving for the gifts they had received. We call Palm Sunday the beginning of Holy Week. Holy Week is that time between Christmas, between Palm Sunday and Easter when we remember the events as described by Matthew that led to Jesus' death on the cross. You may wonder why we call this week Holy Week. Why not Easter Sunday through the following Sunday when the resurrection occurs and Jesus appears to his disciples and the beginning of a new age is started. We celebrate this particular week as Holy Week because it is the culmination of God's work in this world to bring people into God's kingdom. This is the week when, once again, God shows us the way to eternal life. Over and over again, since the beginning of time, since the creation, God has called us to be His children, to follow His commandments. Over and over again, He has tried to show us the way into his kingdom. Over and over again he has tried to show us how to escape the suffering and fear that we encounter in this world and to be able to live a life knowing that God is with us always. At the beginning of time when human beings first came into existence there was something within us which caused us to rebel against God. There was this desire within ourselves to control our own fate and to not listen to our Creator, to the words that He proclaimed, to the path He offered to life and eternal life. Abraham was taught by God to abandon sacrifice, human sacrifice and animal sacrifice, and instead to make his life a sacrifice to God. He was taught by God that what God wanted was for Abraham to be a holy person, to be a believer in God, and in return God said, if you will follow me, your descendants will be greater than the number of stars in the sky. God led the people of Israel out of bondage from Egypt. And when they had entered into the wilderness and gained their freedom, he said, follow these ten commandments and you will prosper and you will live under my protection forever. And they failed again and again to follow his commandments. And as they wandered in the wilderness, they rebelled against God and lost hope and faith. And God over and over again cared for them, protected them, until finally they came into the promised land. And God said, you will have your own nation. My people, you will have your own nation. And if you follow my commandments, you will prosper, and I will protect you forever. But corruption and self-serving idolatry took over the people of Israel, and their nation fell into ruin 
and was conquered by others. And the nation was lost. The nation that God had promised to protect if only they would follow his commandments. And over and over again, while they were a nation, God sent prophets to preach his word, to offer them again the opportunity to return to his commandments. But they failed to heed these words. And now, on Holy Week, we see that God decided that the only way he could convince us of his love and his offer of freedom from suffering in this world was for himself to come and be a human being, to suffer and die as one of us. And so we celebrate this week, this week that we call Holy Week, because we walk with God as he suffers and dies. We walk with God as he feels the same pain and longing that we feel. We walk with God as he stands beside us to tell us that he too has felt all of the pain and the suffering that we have felt. And that he is with us in that suffering and will turn that suffering into an eternal victory. If we will but do two things, we will be part of God's kingdom. If we love God with our whole heart, mind, and soul, and if we love our neighbors as ourselves, we will be protected and cared for by God for all eternity. There's something else that we learn from this Holy Week, from this march to the cross that God makes himself. And it is that our institutions that bind us together are infected with the same idolatry and self-serving needs that we as individuals are. We see that the government and the faithful elders and leaders and even Jesus' own band of disciples abandon him. We see God abandoned by all of the institutions around him and the one institution that he himself built, his community of disciples. We see that even institutions can be self-serving and can drive us away from God. And we are reminded that not only we ourselves need to love God and our neighbor, but we need to build institutions that do the same so that we do not kill the Spirit of God in this world, and that we walk with God, not only ourselves as individuals, but as a community, as a nation, as a world. Hopefully, through all of this suffering that we're enduring, we can see that we walk with God, that we are suffering with Him, and that if we return to Him, and if we follow Him, and if we love Him and our neighbors, our lives will prosper, and God will protect us for all eternity. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, be with us in this time of turmoil. Help us to see that You are with us. Help us to see that You love us. Help us to turn to you in our future lives. Help us to come through this suffering with you to find that miraculous moment when we are resurrected from the dead and granted life eternal. In Christ's name we pray. Let us say together the words of our faith as they are written in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, 
true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, Holy Trinity, one God, most merciful God, we come to you in the time of anxiety and uncertainty surrounding the outbreak of COVID-19. As the sorrows of our heart and mind increase, we beseech you to save us from all trouble and fear. Cast away all works of darkness. Be our rock a castle to keep us safe. For the Lord is, a, is our stronghold and sure defense, and he will be our savior. For all who have died, receive them into the arms of your mercy, grant them eternal peace, and surround those who mourn with your healing grace. For those directly infected with the virus, help them recover in good health and restore them in body, mind, and spirit. For those at high risk of infection, especially the elderly, those with underlying illnesses, the marginalized, and the poor, keep them healthy and free from all sickness. For those in quarantine, the shut-in, and the infirm, help them find peace, keep them in good health, and renew their mind and spirit. For all hospitals, doctors, nurses, and staff, Protect them as they minister to the sick. Relieve all stress and provide the resources and space to meet the needs of all the infirm. For first responders, guard them from all harm and grant them strength and courage as they respond to all calls for help. For service industry workers and those forced to work as their community shuts down, keep them healthy. Bestow the resources to best care for themselves and their families and assure them in times of financial and medical anxiety. For those experiencing financial loss and uncertainty of resources, have mercy on them. Alleviate any fear and provide them. Provide for them daily bread and wage. For the leaders of this nation and the world, Help them make sound and safe decisions to best secure the future of our planet. For all schools, students, teachers, administrators, and school staff, as schools remain open, keep them healthy and in good spirits to learn. As schools close, feed those who will go hungry without guaranteed meals and shelter all students who have no place to live. For all scientists, and those working to find a cure, inspire them towards your truth and help them discover and disseminate a vaccine and cure. For all media and journalists, protect them from all harm in their reporting and move them to be a vector of truth and certainty and never fear or panic. For all places of worship, embolden them to be beacons of hope and love and help us to gather however and wherever we can be it in person or online, to give you praise. For the leaders of our church, help them minister to their flock, fortify them to be faithful pastors, 
to persevere in prayer and to build up the family of God in new and creative ways. For the young, spare them from harm and fear and keep them joyful. Keep them a joyful sign of your love and light. For all parents, build them, build in them strength and fortitude for the time ahead, and give them the words and witness to be wise counselors and compassionate caregivers. For calm amidst the storm, as the waves toss our boat and wonder, and we wonder, do you not care? Remind us to not be afraid that with you all things are possible, and that even the wind and sea obey you. Lord, Stir up in us a spirit of compassion and tenacity for the time ahead. Amen. Move us to check in with loved ones at high risk of infection and those in quarantine. Amen. Ease our fear and anxiety that we may share our resources rather than hoard them and extend a helping hand to those in need. Amen. Inspire us to share the good news of your love and hope. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, healer of the sick, ruler of the tempestuous sea, and savior of the world. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.